All right, guys, full disclosure. I love Scooby-Doo. As a little kid, Scooby-Doo is probably one of the main shows I would sit and watch all day for no other reason than just childish glee. Yes, the mysteries were pretty basic. Yes, you never were all that worried about the heroes. And yes, the animation had a budget of a vending machine snack, but that was part of the charm. It knew what it was, established an identity, and has lasted with us for years through various reboots and new spinoffs. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse, but I owe a lot to Scooby-Doo. In fact, it was Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island that first made me realize zombies could be somewhat entertaining rather than annoying filler monsters. And it's time again. They've got you running through the night. It was Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School that helped inspire my story Monster Club. Find their rooms. They must be tired. They don't run like they're tired. Yeah, you'd think they'd never met a girl ghoul before. <laughs> And it was What's New Scooby-Doo's theme song that first made me realize just how awesome a re-updated theme could be. Actually, Scooby-Doo is one of those timeless creations that, no matter how cleanly you dissect it or how deep you try to dig, there's no one way to fully understand how perfect it really is. Something as simple as a group of college-age kids solving mysteries with their dog is kooky and goofy, but at the same time, it's easy for kids to digest. It's amusing for adults, and all-around wholesome family entertainment. Uh, but like all things in today's media, there are those who seek to reimagine it and recreate it. Introducing HBO Max's original new series, Velma. A reboot of Scooby-Doo that has redesigned the characters removed Scooby-Doo the dog entirely, yes, they removed Scooby-Doo, and focuses more on Velma's character and her origin story. Can you already see the serious problems with this idea? If not, don't worry. You soon will. Let's take a look at the trailer. Dear HBO Max, I just learned you intend to make a genre-bending comedic origin story of Judy Jetson. When I heard this new version of Judy Jetson wouldn't be boy crazy, the only word I had to describe my disgust is jinkies. If there is one thing the internet agrees on, it's that you should never change anything ever. I hope you die. Sincerely, Velma. So we open with Velma writing a strongly worded email to HBO Max complaining about their plan to reimagine Judy Jetson's character and not keep it true to the original and how angry and furious she is that this is being done. This is obviously meant a bit as a bit of self-aware humor, as this scenario is exactly what HBO Max intends to do with this show, create a comedic reimagined series based around an already beloved series. Now, self-aware humor can be rather enjoyable, but you're about to see why this simply doesn't work. Well, at least Judy's still white. <sighs> okay, and now you're seeing why this doesn't work. The joke here is that Velma is talking like the critics of her show will talk. HBO Max is fully aware of what obvious criticisms will be thrown at their new show. That it's trying to recreate what doesn't need to be recreated. That it's going to race swap characters for no other reason than to meet a diversity quota. And that the fans will be very passionate and angry about the whole ordeal. But see, just because you're acknowledging it, there, there are a few things wrong with this. Number one... Just because you're acknowledging your own sins does not absolve you of them. Just because you are aware of what you're doing to piss off your audience does not mean it will suddenly make people like you. Number two, your goal here should be to win over the Scooby-Doo community to your side, to appeal to the original fans and make them interested in your show. That's why you're using the Scooby-Doo characters. Insulting the Scooby-Doo fans openly by mocking their own concerns and criticisms for the show does not make you endearing, nor does it make you look funny. It will actually rub people the wrong way when you mock them for their honest concerns and issues regarding your show. Number three, I'm very confused on what tone you're trying to set for Velma. Will she act this way in the actual show? Being a representation of a traditional fangirl who only wants things to stay the same because she loves the classics? Well, considering your goal with the show is to reimagine the characters and redesign them and do new things, that seems a little counterintuitive to your goal if that is indeed your plan, so my guess is she's going to act differently in the show. 
And if that's the case, then this whole trailer and the way Velma is acting is simply meant to mock the Scooby-Doo community who will not be happy with the choices made for this show. Meaning, you spent money, animation, and time on an insult. Now, I don't know whether to laugh at your pettiness or cringe at how unfunny this insult is. And number four. No, yeah, there's a fourth. In making this Velma, now granted, people have been saying that she's black Velma. She's actually supposed to be Indian, like South Asian Velma, because the voice actress is South Asian, and this is all a self-insert thing. I get that. But by making a South Asian Velma, I know this was a self-insert thing, but did you have to make her look like a black Meg Griffin? I mean, for the love of God, there's a point in the trailer, she even does the family guy's eyes half closed thing. This actually looks unbelievably unappealing. I find this funny because in recent years, people have been trying to sexualize Velma, or at the very least, make her more physically appealing. So now you decide to make the daring choice to make her even less appealing than she was before. I mean, who would be attracted to someone who acted like this? Let alone look like that, but who would be attracted to someone who acted like this? This vitriolic, this sarcastic. Well, I've got more to say, but we'll come back to it. Move along. Unknown caller, spooky. Hello? Velma Dinkley speaking. Hello, Velma. Do you like solving mysteries? Uh, yeah, but I'm actually much more three-dimensional than that. Who is this? I'm much more three-dimensional than that. Okay. Again, the self-aware humor on display here and the general mocking of the critics of the show in general is very annoying, but I want to analyze this. I actually want to take a minute to analyze this. Was Velma Dinkley ever a three-dimensional character in the original show? For those who are unaware, a three-dimensional character is a character who carries the three dimensions of character expression. First is the external dimension, their traits, their quirks, their physical actions, attitudes, and habits that help us know about them and how they act. These can be habits like smoking or how they dress, things like that. The second is the internal conflict or personal baggage. These are their backstories, their fears, their traumas, or their circumstances. Indiana Jones has an intense fear of snakes. That is a part of his backstory and a part of his fear. It's shaped him and who he is, and we'll know how we'll react in a pit of snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? And then there's the moral substance. These are the beliefs or virtues the characters hold true to that help to define what they do, say, and think. Sanji from One Piece will never kick a woman. He just can't do it. So that is a personal moral belief that he holds to and he'll never break that vow. Forget the key. This fight is a matter of life and death. You can't stick to your stupid code of honor, okay? I don't want this. I don't want to die. But I was raised to never hit a lady, no matter what. Even if it kills me, I won't kick a woman. <sighs> a three-dimensional character will possess all of these to some extent. Velma, from the original Scooby-Doo, is probably more of a one-dimensional character. Maybe a two-dimension if you really wanted to stretch it. She has mostly physical quirks and habits, like the joke of her not being able to see without her glasses. <laughs> should be around here somewhere. Always being the smartest one in the room and the one who usually can interpret the clues fastest. She is a bookworm. She likes to study. She's the stereotype nerd. But you could argue that she's also quite grounded. While Shaggy and Scooby are always afraid, believing the ghosts and goblins are real, she is adamant that they are not real. Although you could argue she shares this outlook with Fred and Daphne most of the time. There is very little in terms of backstory to explore with Velma initially, and you also could argue that she doesn't display any personal convictions or beliefs to help understand who she is. So yes, the original Velma is a one-dimensional character. But what about here? Is this new character, this new Velma, three-dimensional? Well, I can't really say for sure because this trailer doesn't tell us anything about Velma. If this trailer is a joke, as I assume it is, then we can't say that anything in this trailer is 100% accurate to what the character is in the show. So we can't assume that anything here will be true to her character. But if it is true, if this is who she really is, and this really is who her character will be, then can you honestly say that this character is an improvement on the original? Can you say this character is better? I mean, that's the point of a remake, right? To improve on the original? This character has no charm. 
This Velma has no endearing qualities. She opens the trailer by writing a hate mail message. She has to tell us that she's three-dimensional without us being able to at least explore her dimensions through action, surroundings, or dialogue. So no, no, this character is worse than the original because I'm sure they intended to add many changes to her in the actual show, but based on the trailer alone, I see nothing endearing or engaging about her. The original Velma might have been simple, but she was charming. She's a one-dimensional character who endeared us to her because she was simple but cute. She was wholesome, virtuous, cared for her friends, as well as seek justice through, through her traits that have been maintained in every interpretation of her character throughout the ages. She's smart. She's friendly. She's kind. She's courteous. She's inventive. She's intelligent. She wants the best for those around her. Here, though, the real question shouldn't be, do you like solving mysteries? The real question should be, who are you? Who is this new Velma? People complaining that Velma is Indian now have a right to that complaint, sure, but that's not the chief issue. The chief issue is that their goal should have been to improve upon the original, and nothing I see here is an improvement. They're so busy acting clever and self-aware in their mocking of the critics that they miss the chance to endear us to her character. And your goal to shoot your audience in the face, you shot yourself in the foot. It doesn't matter if you claim to be three-dimensional, you're annoying in every dimension. That's the mystery, and solve it quick, because I'm in your house. A serial killer calling from inside my house? Yes, that's a classic, and that's my point. Why change anything when the classics all still work, right? Oh look, there it is, there's the Meg Griffin look, see? See that, right there? That's what I mean. Now, with that out of the way, remember when Velma was smart? Remember when the writers were smart? Firstly, the killer calling from inside the house isn't a classic necessarily. It was made popular in the Scream movie, but it's not something that's been repeated in all slasher movies or shows. It's just famous because of its use in Scream. Secondly, watching having a conversation about not changing the classics with the guy on the phone since she wasn't talking to him about this problem prior... I don't get that. Thirdly, some might point out that this was a common joke in Scooby-Doo, that the characters might absentmindedly overlook the presence of a monster in the original show until realizing their presence a moment later. Agreed. That is an old joke, for sure. That was something present. But if this show is all about new and updated takes with harsh, gritty, more adult themes, why are we repeating old comedic angles that you apparently are going to be so much better than that would only make little children laugh? Wait, you're inside my house! Ah, blood! Velma's dead! Well, two things there. First of all, um, I guess this shows all of us critics out there, you know, really teaches us. If Velma's supposed to represent us in this trailer, and she gets killed, yeah, that shows how they feel about us. Second, I'd like to commend the absolute state of HBO Max. I mean, I'm very impressed. You decided to race swap Velma and then had her killed right away. Such a clever move to um, race swap your character, make them dark skinned, and then have them the first to die in your uh, HBO Max trailer. Yep, the dark skinned character dying first in the horror story is truly a step in the more progressive direction, right? Yeah. Yeah, anyway. You know, the funny thing about Scooby-Doo is that despite there always being monsters and mysteries, murder was never an aspect of the show. The show didn't never involve actual murder or blood like this to keep it safe for kids, but obviously this show is going to be more rated R and more mature for an adult audience. And there is an audience for that. I think that there are those within the Scooby-Doo community who would like to see the Scooby gang solve murders or rapes or actual mature crimes, actually getting a bit gritty with a bit of gallows humor involved. But I can tell from your animation, style of humor, and approach that this isn't what you plan to do. You're race swapping Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy, even changing Shaggy's name to Norville. You've removed Scooby-Doo entirely, and you're clearly going for a self-aware comedy style that's meant to mock the tropes and niches of this style of story or media. There are two problems with this. One, if you're going to update a product from its original, your changes have to be done with the purpose of enriching or improving. Making Scooby-Doo more gritty or mature isn't a bad idea, but why are you changing their races? To what end? What does it improve? What does it do better? How does it make Velma more likable or more unique or more engaging? Racial swapping doesn't inherently make a character better by default, so what end was it done for? How does it impact who they are? You did it only for diversity quotas, and rather than acknowledge this choice and say, hey, we know this is different and not what you expected, but trust us, we have a plan for it, your choice is to mock these criticisms and kill the one making them, Velma in this case. And second, jumping off of that last point, I must ask, why are you insulting your audience? 
Why didn't you make a brand new group of mystery solvers? You could have taken the formula of Scooby-Doo, a group of kids who solve mysteries, and make a brand new original show with all your grit and humor and animation. But you didn't. Instead, you took Scooby-Doo. And I can only imagine you did it because you wanted to appeal to the Scooby-Doo fans. But then you must have known they wouldn't like your choices because you're insulting them for being of that opinion, openly mocking critics that say we prefer things the way they were. So congratulations. I will not insult you for being so stupid you didn't realize what you were doing. But that just means you're so disgustingly petty that you knew what you were doing and did it anyway and mocked people who pointed it out. Ah, oh, man. Okay, so... I read an article from Mindy Kaling, the voice of Velma, trying to explain how excited she was to do this role and how shocked she was to see the backlash to her character being like her South Asian self. And she says, but in no way is the gang defined by their whiteness, except for Fred. So I was a little bit surprised. And I think most Indian American girls, when they see this skeptical, hardworking, kind of underappreciated character, can't identify with her. Now that is eye-opening, isn't it? How is Fred defined by his whiteness? Why isn't it Daphne, Velma, or Shaggy, who were all white as well? What's what's wrong with Fred? Why is he more white than the others? That seems a bit racist. But then you follow it up by saying most Indian American girls can identify with her. And therein lies the problem. It's about identity to you. You want to appeal to a specific demographic, but you never stop to wonder if other audiences would too. Instead, you insulted the people who asked that question. The, black, the backlash to your character has less to do with her race and more to do with the show's disdain and appalling response to anyone who says, I don't like this. You don't care about your fans or your audience. You claim this is an origin story for Velma, but how can this be her origin story when everything we see here is nothing like what we see in her later renditions? Can anyone watching this trailer really see Velma we love, the Velma we grew up with, as this character? No. But at the end of the day, this was never about being true to the show or to the fans of it. This was all about self-inserting yourself, as she admitted in her interview. She identified with Velma and wanted to be Velma. Well, here's a shocking report, sweetheart. You're not Velma. You will never be Velma. I'd say that all you're doing is you're just wearing her skin and pretending to be her, but you didn't even have the integrity to wear her skin. <sighs> I'm done with this, but before we go, I'd normally end the video here, but there's one more thing I want to address about Velma before we close out. Velma's been all over the news right lately. Okay, apparently the internet is going crazy because in a recent reveal in another show, people are claiming that Velma Dinkley has finally come out as lesbian for the first time, and everyone is saying, oh, it's finally answering the question. We're finally seeing Velma's true sexual identity. We all were wondering this whole time, but now we finally have evidence proof that Velma all along was lesbian. Yeah, okay. About that, sure, yeah, Velma's totally a lesbian, guys. I mean, the signs were all there in every interpretation of the series, am I right? I mean, she was totally a lesbian and never at all interested in men, except for, I mean, you know. All the time she wasn't a lesbian and was 100% interested in men, like, like, like here. We'll have our official coming out as a couple at the prom, then celebrate by watching the marathon, alone. Just us. Great working with you, Velma. You too, Sam. <gasps> Those shoulders. <laughs> Don't worry. I don't bite. Does she? Oh. Yeah, see, this is like changing her race. It's nothing more than a cringy identity politics bullcrap. You don't care about Velma as a character. You only care about self-insertion and appealing to a small percentage of the audience you think watches your bullshit. I feel so sorry for you, Velma. You're being used as a puppet for all this nonsense, and it just isn't fair. But I'm going to end it there, guys. I've gone on long enough about Velma. I'm going to go watch the original Scooby-Doo and maybe even What's New Scooby-Doo because those are actually the renditions that I actually really, really enjoy. So I'll leave you guys to see whether or not you want to watch this bullcrap new series that's coming out. But take it from me, guys. It's not worth, <laughs> it's not worth any amount of Scooby snacks. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in my next video.